Welcome to the New Discovery Christian Podcast, where you'll find Bible messaging and sermons that will encourage, uplift, and challenge you to a godlier life. Join our community and become inspired to continue living a God-directed life. Welcome again to the New Discovery Podcast. I'm Kyle as your host today, and I got my co-host Parker with me today. So we're going to jump in with another topic that we had kind of talked about previously on the podcast where we were talking about Jesus and how he had times of solitude away from other people. So, and we went through biblical scripture and what that means for us. So this time around, we're going to talk about Jesus and his interactions with people. And so we're going to just dive into that, read some scripture. And what does that mean for our lives then at that point? And how we can incorporate that in our life and what that means uh, scripturally. So we're going to dive in, have, I'm going to read some scripture, Parker's going to read some scripture, and then we're going to do like we usually do and just go ahead and dive in and just our thoughts, and we're just going to go from there. So if you want to follow us, um, we're mostly going to be in the Gospels here. So the first one that I'm going to go through is going to be Luke chapter 4. And that's going to be starting in verse 14. So 4.16. So it says, He went to Nazareth, and this is talking about Jesus, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue, and some of you don't know synagogue, it's similar to church, uh, assembly of people for worship. And as is his custom which he goes there, that's his custom. He stood up to read, and then the scroll of the prophet of Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling, he found the place where it was written, Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of the sight of the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began to say to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. The next one is going to be in John 11. And that's going to be starting, I'll be starting in verse, yeah, John, yeah, chapter 11 starting, I'll start in verse 11. After he had said this, he went, and this is Jesus, he went to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. His disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. So then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Then Thomas, also known as Denimus, said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. And the last one I'm going to go over is Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. And I'll be starting in verse 41. So 241 in Luke. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover, and for context, Jesus is uh, very young. So when he was 12 years old, this is Jesus, he went up to the festival according to this custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it, thinking he was in their company. They traveled on for another day. Further down, it says, After three days they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And then further down, it says, um, after his mother and father had found him, and it says here at the end, And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God. And it says his mother treasured that in her heart. So, all right, Parker's got a few scriptures for you guys. Yeah, so this is Matthew 8, 14 and 15. So it says, And when Jesus had come to Peter's home, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick in bed with a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and waited on him. And then the next one will be Luke 9, 11. And it says, But the multitudes were aware of this and followed him and welcomed him, or welcoming them. He began speaking to them about the kingdom of God and curing those who had need of healing. 
So, and then the last one that I'm going to read will be John seven fourteen, And it says, but when it was, make sure that's right. Yeah. It says, but when it was now the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and began to teach. So as we usually do, we kind of we go ahead and read and then our first kind of thoughts on what we had read. So as I was going through this, uh, the different scriptures, um, a few of the things that came to mind was that, for me at least, was Jesus is always engaging in different ways with people and different ways, different scenarios but he's never, he, he has like a balance between the withdrawal and being with people. And one thing that I liked that it continuously says is that this was a custom. This is what this is what was normal, especially when it comes to the synagogue and when it comes to going to celebrations, festivals and the temple, that those are things that he consistently always did. It wasn't, oh, it's rainy outside, so I'm not going to go. Or I don't feel like it, so I'm not going to go. Or not this year or not this not this season. Uh, I'm not going to end up going. It was the custom to to go. That's that's what we're going to do. And I think that's I think that's really important in it. I think it shows how important it is the engagement with other people where it's not just a flippant thing where, oh, it's Christmas this year. I guess I'll go to church. And so that's kind of the thinking that I have here. It's no, it's uh, Saturday and I could think Sunday, we're going to go up and we're going to be with around everyone. Um, It's this time of year of uh, whatever festival it is in the Jewish calendar. And yeah, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go around and be around people and we're going to worship God. Um, it mentions um, when you think festival, they're going to, there's going to be a lot of eating around dinner table. You know, there's going to be a lot of engagement with people. It's not going to be, um, oh, I don't feel like being around people. Um, I don't want to be around that. That could be stressful. That could be, that may make me anxious to be around people. Well, I'm an introvert. So, you know, I'm not going to be around people because that's just not me. So I'll go do the part where Jesus says, be alone and, you know, read scripture, but, uh, synagogue, I'll go when I feel like it, when my mood is there, or when it comes to the festivals, it's like, uh, maybe if my friend's there, but if not, I'll be too anxious and I won't go. Um, that that's, I don't know. Those are some of my initial thoughts as I kind of thought about this and, my own life and what I've kind of seen with some people where they make these decisions based off of my personality or my mood, or do I feel like it or, well, I'll just be anxious. So, you know, the anxiety makes the decision. Yeah. Um, I guess my initial thoughts were, well, kind of going off what we talked about the last time with the solitude and something that you pointed out that I hadn't considered was that Jesus went into solitude to prepare for something. Mm. And that next something usually involved other people, right? So, well, if you look at, I'm not going to read the actual verse out of Matthew, but of course at the end of Matthew, and I guess it's 28, it's the last chapter, uh, you have what we call the Great Commission, which is where Jesus tells us like, no, we're to go out into the world and share the gospel, you know, make disciples. So, I mean, for a Christian, like we're, like little, that's not a suggestion. Like that's a command. Like we're commanded to go out um, and to be with other people and to and to share the the gospel with them. And I like what Paul says in Romans nine. If I can flip to it, maybe it's ten. It's not nine. Sorry, nine's great too. But um, but it says that. Uh, well, I just read through it. It says um, starting. In, let's see where do I want to start. Let's go to chapter ten. We'll just start in verse nine. It says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart, um, yeah, for with the heart man believes, resulting in righteousness, and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes in him shall not be disappointed, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call upon him. Um, and then this kind of gets into the the point I was trying to get to. It says, so this is in verse 13, it says, For whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Well, how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 
And how shall they preach unless they are sent, just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad tidings of good things. Um, And then he goes on to say, so faith comes from hearing and hearing of the word of Christ. Uh, But kind of the main point he's getting at is like, well, how can these people, you know, hear about God? How can they hear about Christ unless we're going out into, like you said, the multitudes, as it said in the Bible, um, getting to know people, meeting them where they're at without sin. We're not going out and sinning, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, but going out there, meeting people, um, and sharing the the good news of of Christ. Yeah, I think uh, one thing too that I think about is, and Jesus going out among the crowds is he's going where uh, people were already at too, and that's that's another thinking is hey, people were already already at the temple, people were already at the synagogue, or. There's people in the context of mourning. He's just doing the normal things where people are going. And so that I think that's an important thing of Jesus didn't find these quote unquote mundane things, if we want to call that uh, mundane. And he went and went to these, found them important. And I think sometimes uh, people can think um, I need to create a scenario that's so um, – exciting or pizzazz like for people to come to me kind of thing um to be able to get the gospel out or to engage with people and that's be super exciting but that's just not really the case is with jesus it's you know let's go to the weekly meeting uh where people are worshiping um lazarus has died a context of someone that's mourning and then how can how can we work through that? Uh, the temple where people are making sacrifices, there's worshiping, there's prayer involved there. Um, you have the celebrations, which are usually in Jerusalem as well, and that's usually around a dinner table. Um, people are eating, they're feasting, uh, there's there's dancing, things like that involved as, as far as we know with celebrations like that. Um and then the crowds, you could say, are maybe a little bit a little bit different because people are coming to Jesus because uh, specifically his teaching and his healing. But even then, if you think about it, it's because of his interactions with these other scenarios where um, where you had read when it comes to the crowds, where he he was welcoming. I think that's pretty important there. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's people around, and he's not. You know, let me let me run into the corner kind of thing and let me hide from everyone and not engage. It's they are coming to him. And then on top of that, he's like, you know, he's welcoming them. Um, he's says he's healing them. So he's in, there's an intentionality uh, that's that's with that and what he does with people. And and then he's visiting Peter's mom in law. Well, you could say, well, that doesn't matter. You know, it's like. You know, that's not an important scenario. But then he even takes that and visits Peter's mother-in-law and then makes a great example out of that. And so, you know, some people may say, well, I can't heal people. Um, yeah, and I mean, that's true. But there is a context where you could go and visit people like this. And, you know, sometimes you just praying over someone in a scenario. That is doing something. You know, mm-hmm. you may not be able to lay your hands on them and it completely goes away or anything like that. Right. But that matters to people, though. Um and I think I think it's important for us to remember that these things have an intentionality that Jesus didn't just say things and people just followed. He went into the crowds and engaged with them. And then what's that saying? People don't care what you say until they know how much you care. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that's also what's going on here too, is Jesus isn't just let me just say a bunch of stuff and you know, and then I'm just gonna run off or something like that. There's he's speaking with them, engaging with them, talking with them, but there's also an intentionality while he's with them as well. There's um, there's an experience, if may I say, that's going on here as well. Um, there's not just an engagement of the head. There's an engagement of the heart. I feel yeah. like is going on as well. Um, For sure. And I feel like that's that's important. I feel like, and you know, people are going to listen to probably one of these messages that we're talking about and. They may be inclined more towards one, as in more saying, which one are they more comfortable with? Are they more comfortable with going on the mountain with their Bible and having a great time with God? And that's awesome. Um, But at the same time, Jesus is doing this as well. And I always kind of like how Jesus' personality, 
and I'm sure he did have a personality, I'm sure, because he was fully human. So that would assume he has one. But I think it's interesting how the Gospels, I've always wondered why you never really get um, any information on his personality. It seems like any of those details are kind of stripped from the Bible. And, you know, I've always wondered about it, but I think they did it on purpose because they want you there. I think what's most important is that balance that Jesus has between uh, retreating um, from society. And like we talked about, making sure he's straight with who he is and what he's going to do to then be around people. Um, Cause I, I think the two are um, it's like the coin, you got the head and you got the tails and they're both the coin and it's both what makes up a coin at the same time. So, mm -hmm. you know, you can't have one without the other, you know, you don't have the retreating and being on your own with God and his word. And what do I need to do confronting yourself? Um, cause then you'll be useless around people. If, if I can, if I can say, if I can say that you'll, you'll be too worried about what people think of you. And I could say Jesus did a lot of things where he needed to not care what people thought about him. He needed to care more about what God thought of him and what God was calling him to do. He didn't need to be worried about, well, people want me on, you know, God's throne physically here in Jerusalem and beat the Romans. That wasn't why I was called, but uh, that peer pressure is so hard on me right now. You know, he, he, it, you know, he had to work through those kind of things and it was, and you may say, well, that wasn't a temptation for Jesus. Well, Satan tempts him in something that's extremely similar when he's in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, bow down to me and all these nations will be yours. Well, Jesus has all the nations right now. Uh, but that was by going to the cross. So You're right. have the nations without the suffering. So that was a temptation of Jesus to have done that. So, and, and that was in the context of Jesus being alone and making sure he could handle that. And then, I mean, that temptation didn't stop. You know, it started to happen through the crowds later on. It says, you know, they wanted to anoint him right there. It says the crowds. And then Jesus withdrew when that happened. So engagement, withdraw, two heads of the same coin. Um, yeah. And I think that's uh, important for us to remember. Um, yeah, I really like two things that you said. The first about the mundane tasks, and, and this this is a little cheesy, but I think it helps if we, instead of approaching what we would call mundane tasks, I, hope, I don't know if I'm saying mundane right, but we'll say boring tasks. Yeah, same, same uh, thing. Um, if we would approach it, not saying like, oh, I have to do this, uh, but instead saying like, oh, I get to do this. Because I think, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in uh, the, just the small things, like just holding a door open for somebody mm -hmm. or just go, like you said, maybe just shooting somebody a text. Uh, maybe they have somebody sick, you know, or I mean, nothing bad has to happen to shoot somebody a, a encouraging message. But, you know, just like small things like that, um, I think go a long way, uh, especially with, you know, having opportunities to share the gospel. Uh, but the second thing you said about, you know, somebody might listen to this and say, well, I'm not, you know, I'm introverted, so this is not my thing. Or maybe on the previous one, they're like, well, I have to be around people, so I don't I don't want to be alone. Right. And and, and that's true, and that can be, you know, that's, it, it's fine to, I think, maybe prefer one over the other, but I think the the problem is, like, there, you need both. Mm -hmm. And to kind of give a, I guess, an illustration is not everybody is, gifted you could say or called to you know be a preacher right like not everybody has the gift of you know publicly communicating the gospel of 2000s okay mm -hmm. that's that's kind of a rare thing but we're all commanded to share the gospel mm -hmm. so kind of the point is you don't have to be gifted or you don't have to have like your personality doesn't have to be predisposed to being alone or being in public uh, to still do it, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. And I think yeah. you still get the benefits, even if that's not your thing. Because, I, I mean, I'm an introvert, uh, but, I mean, I still go out and, you know, try to talk to people, be mm -hmm. friendly, get to know people. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you, you definitely need both. Like you said, you need that balance. And I think you made a good point, as Jesus does seem to, you know, strike that balance between the two. Yeah, and, you know, everyone, uh, you hold that thought, we're going to cut right here. This is going to be the part one, and then we're going to move more into discussion and more of kind of what that looks like for us as Parker kind of 
went ahead and got that started for us right now and we're going to move that into part two of uh engagement with other people discussing jesus so see you then